Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Let's start by going around in a circle and introducing ourselves. Hello. I'm hungry. Well, hey there, hungry. I'm dad. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> The year is 1918, World War I has ended, over 10 people have died, and Central Europe is as unstable as Billie Eilish's fanbase. Austria-Hungary had been on the losing side of the war, and was forced to become Austria and Hungary. And Yugoslavia. And Poland and Czechoslovakia and Romania and Italy. Hungary was a little butthurt over losing all this territory and decided that it'd be pretty swell if they could just, you know, get it all back. However, the democratic government that had taken over after the collapse of Austria-Hungary wasn't exactly in a position to start an offensive war. This forced your average Hungarian nationalist to start looking for other options. Hey dude, could you uh, could you pass me a pencil? <laughs> no. <laughs> what do you think, we live in like a communist society or something? Wait. Stop it, no, what are you doing? Put, put that hammer and sickle down. Okay, fine, fine, here's my pencil. I think you mean our pencil. No! Naturally then, as the communists promised to restore Hungary's former borders and revive its economy, people decided they might as well give the Reds a shot. While they were at it, they might as well pass some land distribution laws and nationalize everything too. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I'm I have so why are we yeah, oh, man, red is only my second favorite color! Surprise! Communism didn't work and Romanian troops have occupied Budapest. Who'd have thunk it? Luckily for Hungary, there is this dude named Mikolos Horti who was conveniently located close by and marched into the city as soon as the Romanians left to start up a new government. Unluckily for Hungary, his troops started killing anyone that looked at them the wrong way and drove over 100,000 people out of the country, although it should be noted that Horti himself was pretty opposed to all this. Horti and his buddies then declared a monarchy with Horti as regent, which was a little awkward since there was still an heir to the Hungarian throne lying around in Switzerland. Somewhere. The first order of business for Horti's government was to sign an official peace treaty with the Entente since Hungary's political turmoil had prevented them from doing anything productive for the past couple of years. The Treaty of Trianon sealed the deal on Hungary losing most of its territory and population. Over 30% of ethnic Hungarians found themselves outside of their own country and the economy was wrecked. To make matters even more confusing, as this was going on, you've got Charles IV, the rightful heir of Hungary, trying to reclaim his throne on two separate occasions and then just straight up dying after the second try. By 1922, things had calmed down a bit and Hungary could start to focus on what really mattered. Alright boys, remember how our economy sucks? And remember how we lost all our good farmland? Well, I have a plan to make it all better. We just need some big loans to revive our economy, which we'll be able to pay back quickly since the global economy is doing so great. Alright, aggressive expansion it is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. With the economy in shambles, Horti appointed Yula Gumbush, a conservative reactionary who promised to make everything better as Prime Minister in 1932. Which... Is, is remarkably similar to this other situation, now that I think about it. Gumbush pursued closer ties with Germany, and although this did pull Hungary out of the Great Depression, it made the Hungarian economy dependent on trade with Germany. I'd like one donut, please. Alright, sir. Uh, please allow six to seven business days for that to ship from Germany. Wait a minute! Gumbush also cozied up with Italy and got Mussolini to renounce the Treaty of Trianon with him, which Britain and France predictably did nothing about. Over time, Hungary became a mutual friend of both Italy and Germany, and it was actually Gumbush who came up with the name Axis for their alliance. Hungary's new friends turned out to be somewhat of a bad influence, and soon Hungary was starting to openly disrespect the Treaty of Trianon by increasing its army well over the 35,000 man limit it was supposed to adhere to. In in the long run though, Hungary's membership in the Axis turned out to be slightly inconvenient, but it's really none of my business. 
No, seriously, it's not. Check out Historiographs video if you want to learn more about Hungary in World War II. You could also check out House of History's video on the Hungarian Revolution of 1848 for some context leading up to Hungary's independence. There's also a whole playlist of this stuff linked in the description, so knock yourself out with that.